So I'm going to take a few minutes to talk to you about this quest to create this epidemic of giving. So about a year ago, I was standing in the bathroom, I was brushing my teeth, and I had this revelation, this aha moment. I was disappointed with the person that was looking back at me in the mirror. Now, that happens often, okay? <laughs> okay? But this was different. This was different. I was not the person that I thought that I should be. I believe that, I've always believed that I was a world changer. But the problem is, is there was no action. There's not enough action behind that belief. And so that day as I was brushing my teeth, I decided I need to do more. I can do more. I have time. I have skills. I can do more. So we created this service project called Impact 52. And Impact 52, is, as Craig said, is, is my family and I volunteering with a different nonprofit organization once a week for 52 weeks. Okay, we really wanted to accomplish three things. Number one, we wanted to impact the community. Okay, we wanted to get involved and make a difference in the lives of other people. Secondly, we wanted to teach our children about volunteerism and service. I have two daughters, ages 14 and 11, and we live in a me world. We want our girls to learn and experience the joys of helping others. And lastly, we wanted to inspire other families and other individuals to get more involved in their community, to create this epidemic of giving that infects person from person, community to community. Imagine the world we'd live in if everyone could give just a little bit more. So now let me fast forward 52 weeks. This week, I actually completed the 52nd volunteer opportunity. Thank you. 47 organizations, 300 plus hours, we believe we've made an impact in this community. My children are growing into leaders who are inspiring other children at school to get involved. We volunteered at the rescue mission recently, and a couple days beforehand, both of my girls came to me and said, I have friends that want to come along. So four 14 and younger girls serving the Sunday night meal at the rescue mission. The blog that week, and so we created a blog to share these stories, impact52.org. The blog that week was all their words. I asked each one of them to write a short paragraph about how it made them feel. What did they learn? Eye-opening testimonials from four great young women. We're having an impact. But what's so inspiring is the impact and the, and the response that we've received from this community and from communities all over the world. We're getting thousands of hits to the blog every month. We've received emails from almost 30 states and five countries. Now these aren't people who've read the blog, these are people who have sought out to contact us after the fact to say, thank you for what you're doing. I've been inspired. I recently received an email from a dentist in New York who stumbled across our blog, okay, the power of social media. Don't know how they find it, but they do. But his email stated, I needed to do more. You've inspired me to do more. So, his email said, starting next month, the third Friday of every month, I'm going to offer free dental service to those staying at the rescue mission down the street from my office. A Friday when his office is not open. I received an email a few weeks ago from a mother in Alaska who's rethinking how she spends time with her child. She has a nine-year-old son who needs to be exposed to life. She's rethinking how they spend that time together. We received 200 toothbrushes from an orthodontist in Phoenix, Arizona. She was inspired to do more. She mailed them to us with a note that simply said, I know you can find a home for these. We donated those to the Ronald McDonald House here in town. <laughs> so we, the epidemic has started. So much so that we are now doing year two. 
So next week, we will start the next 52 weeks of this project. But my challenge to everyone in this room today is that we all can do more. Fort Wayne is an unbelievable community of philanthropists and humanitarians. We have hundreds and thousands of people who every day commit to making a positive impact in the life of other people. But that also means we have hundreds or thousands that don't. We all have to stop and rethink how we spend the time. Every day as I talk to people, oh, I'd really like to get more involved in my community, but I really don't have time. Bullshit. Okay? Everyone in this room today, you wanted to be at TEDx. You made sure you put it in your calendar and you made a point to be at TEDx. If you want to play golf, you make an effort, you put it in your calendar, you make sure that you make that time. Why should volunteerism be any different? If we truly want to love our neighbor, we have to get to know our neighbor. We need to invest time in our neighbor. So my challenge today to everyone in this room is to stop, rethink, and change the world. Change Fort Wayne. I've seen my children grow. I've grown. I'm a better man today than I was a year ago. I'm a better father today. I'm a better husband. When you expose yourself to social issues and, and injustices that affect our community and those around us, it's an eye-opening experience. When you climb under a bridge in downtown Fort Wayne where four gentlemen live in the dirt along the rocks of the river and hear the stories, you realize there's a lot more you can do. You learn a lot about yourself. I was always somebody that I don't, I don't label people, right? I, a lot of us think that. But I can remember a time in Fryman Square with my family, homeless gentlemen, sitting over, and the whole time we were in the park, I always knew where he was. Why? Because in my mind, I had labeled him as being someone who could harm my children. After volunteering for 52 weeks or spending time with that, those homeless in the park, we actually met a homeless man that slept, sleeps, on a park in Headwood, uh, sleeps on a bench in Headwaters Park. He chooses to sleep on the bench he has a home. He has a place to go to. His father. This gentleman is a recovering heroin addict. His father is a current heroin addict. He chooses to sleep on the street versus go home to a life in a temptation of drugs. How could I as an individual label him as being anything other than making a right decision? But unfortunately, that's what we do as a society. If we all set one goal for ourselves when we leave here today. I'm going to positively impact those people around me every day. So every day I'm going to positively impact people around me. Think about the world that you could create. That doesn't mean you have to make a commitment that we, like we've made. And maybe it's one hour a month. Maybe it's one hour a week. Maybe it's just smiling at somebody as you pass them on the sidewalk. I'm saying to the lady at the drive through window at McDonald's, Okay? She's the first person who's ever smiled after hearing my singing. Okay? But she needed that. My goal was to make her smile. It's a thankless job. It's a thankless job. But I wanted, to, I wanted to have an impact on her that day. And she smiled, and as she handed my food, she said, thank you. You don't realize how much I needed that. So my challenge to everybody in this room today, when you leave here, there are four things you need to do. You need to stop. You need to rethink how you spend your time. You need to act. And you need to change the world. Thank you very much.